Welcome to Reef Diary, day 44. So today was MACNA, and so I enjoyed some talks this afternoon or this evening, and they're still going, but I thought I'd take a break and work on the tank because someone showed up earlier today, a customer, and while he was here, he dropped off a bunch of hammer coral. So what I did was they were in bags, and they were in my sump, so they were fine for temperature, but they're in the bags a long time, and I needed to get them dipped, which I used some Revive, and then I had to cut off the bases that I felt were pointless for my reef, and kind of get rid of some things that look like former vermited snail tubes. And uh, then I planted them in the reef. So I shot some footage. I'm gonna kind of take you through it. And that will be today's diary. So I placed all the hammers in a bucket of tank water using Revive Coral Cleaner and let them sit for about 10, 12 minutes. The next step was to go ahead and take each hammer coral, each little tiny colony, and trim off the dead section. The dead section is dark green versus the rest of it that's a lighter color with the white skin. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping them into the Revive a few more times, you know, literally up and down a few times to shake off any kind of bugs, and then I put it through the saw. Now for some reason today the saw was spattering me in the face with water, so I'm making funny faces, but that's okay. I just had to get the job done. So each piece was taken out of that bucket of coral cleaner, pushed through the saw, trim off a few pieces and then get it into a bucket of clean tank water that way the chemical wasn't sitting on that coral too long and i was able to do all of this within a matter of maybe five or six minutes so total time the corals were in solution was maybe 16 17 minutes you know for the very last piece but the first piece was taken out of 12 minutes now wouldn't you know while i'm busy filming and jack is checking on me and seeing what i'm doing the cord gets in the way of the camera it's like, what is going on? I need a cameraman so badly. Now, wet saws are very nice to use. They allow you to trim through soft corals and uh, even some harder ones, but hammer corals are super brittle. And if, you're, if you were to use cutting tools, it would actually shatter them. It would crush them and you'd have these jagged pieces. So I really prefer to use the saw to trim through the stumps and have a nice clean edge at the bottom. And I can use the blade because it's such a fine diamond tip blade. I can actually trim off some little excess pieces as long as I'm careful not to affect the coral tissue that's alive. So you'll see me kind of navigating different pieces through here as I'm trying to clean it up and make it look better and better. Now, as you can see, this is actually quite a generous gift uh, of how much coral he gave me. When he contacted me, he said he had a lot of it in his tank and he wanted to bring me a big section but then it was so large he couldn't put it in a bucket so he broke it up into smaller pieces. So I'm actually working my way through, I don't know, five or six or seven different pieces total, getting them prepared for the reef tank. He told me once he removed that big section of hammer from his own reef, he suddenly had all this open space and he was really happy about that. So he was happy to provide me with a coral and he was happy to open up some space in his own reef tank for some more flow to get through and for more swimming room for his fish. And you know what? He's probably going to plant some new corals in that spot anyway. One last fragment to go. And now that I've finished up with this part of it, I can move on to the next step. At this point, you want to take each coral and you want to study them. If you need to, use a magnifying glass and look over that coral very carefully to see if there's anything that doesn't belong or anything that you're concerned about. You may discover little micro brittle starfish. Those are okay. You might see copepods, those are okay. Amphipods, those are okay. But, you know, if you were to see something like vermitids, or if you saw um, pest algae that was irritating, you know, that could, you know, you don't want it to grow in your tank, you would want to remove that from the skeleton now before it goes in your reef. Because I have so many pieces to put in the tank, I decided that I was going to get the walk board. Now, my walk board is super heavy. I had a friend make me a new one to replace the old one that was difficult to insert and remove and he made me a really nice perfect one but it's crazy heavy. <laughs> so now I have to really struggle to move it and so I don't like moving it very often but it definitely needed to be used today for this task with all these hammer frags that have to go into the reef tank. When I ordered the steel stand for the aquarium back in 2010, I ordered it with a walkboard. So I have been doing this now for 11 years, and I love having the ability to work right at the top of the tank, standing on this board, and not worrying at all about where my feet are going to be. My bucket of corals is on the walk board. I've got a step ladder nearby, so I can go ahead and climb up there and start putting corals in the tank. But first, let's get rid of another dead one. That's always fun, right? 
which of course you know I grew from a tiny frag. That's okay. It was looking pretty sick and I had a feeling it wasn't going to last much longer and it was shedding skin all the way up to today. So the hammer curls, they go in one by one. And what I, you know, you have different choices, but what I choose to do, especially with hammers, put them down on the sand, put them down low in an area of low flow. We don't want a ton of um, water movement across the polyps that could hurt them or even tear the tissue off the skeleton. So I've picked this spot down to the bottom of the rock work in the back of my reef. There's plenty of light back there. It's not a shaded spot, it's just the back of the reef tank. And the reason I'm putting it there is because that's a good spot for right now. If I want to relocate them later to the balmy area of the reef, I can do that. But for now, I just want to get them in the tank so that they're safe and healthy and able to, uh, you know, get some rest tonight after it lights out. I do want to point out that I didn't cut off all of the dead skeleton under, underneath. I just cut off a big section, but there's some part of just the stony part, and that can be pressed down into the sand to kind of prop the coral up and keep the delicate tissue off the sand itself. If it touches the sand, that's okay. If you wanted to use putty or you wanted to use glue or you wanted to use zip ties to secure it to your rock work, you could. In my situation, I find that unnecessary. These weren't tiny little frags either. It's not like I had to stab one little guy into the sand and have a polyp right at the surface of the sand like an anemone. But I did have quite a few, and so I was trying to arrange them kind of in a line. I thought it might be a cool looking row of because uh, there should be all the same color as far as I know. Now I'm working from above the tank which is always difficult because you can't really see what's happening so after a while you just have to stop and you have to get down and you have to look and see where things are and then see if you need to make any changes. Right now my main focus is to get all the corals out of that bucket and into the reef tank. So one by one I keep moving them in there and I try to find a spot where they can touch each other, but I don't want them to touch any other neighboring corals. I don't want any up against the leather coral yet. I don't want it to sit on top of the chalice. I didn't want it to sit on top of a piece of bird's nest that was on the sand bed. So I'm kind of shifting things and moving things around a little bit in the back. But fortunately, it's a mostly wide open area where I had plenty of room to actually put these in there. Also, I'm not sacrificing rock work by putting the hammer corals on the top of the aquascape which is another important thing to keep in mind as you're thinking ahead as you plant the corals in your reef. Once you've completed what you're trying to do, a good rule of thumb is to wave your hand back and forth near the corals to see if there's any kind of movement or motion. If they stay stable, they're good to go. So when I looked, I saw, oh, well, I've got a hammer right next to a fabia, right next to another coral which was that chalice. I don't want one thing to sting another, so I'm gonna have to hop back up there and make a couple of quick changes. So the first thing is to move the chalice out of my way and put it to a different spot on the open sand bed over to the right. And then I'm gonna take that large hammer colony that's on the left there, that's right in front of the favia, because I know that favia stings things at night, and I'm gonna move it over away from it. So I'm creating kind of some space for a very good reason. And then sometimes you may need to take a coral and kind of turn it and pivot it and figure out which way it sits best where you're parking it. That looks just about right. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to call that good and leave it alone for tonight. So here they are immediately after I finished. Uh, they, they're already starting to open up a little bit. And you can see how far away they are from the Vortec pump that is pushing flow up above them. One more thing that happened today is I tried to figure out the Fauna Marin test kit for potassium. And the first thing you're supposed to do is use their, um, their standard, which would give you the set number so you know it's accurate before you even test your water. And I failed at the standard test, but I had the kit out, so I tried it one more time, just measuring my tank, and I believe I'm at 370. <clears throat> so, uh, I need to verify that. So I'm going to play with it a little bit more. Maybe I'll look up a video on how it's being used and kind of get more familiar with that kit before I can say arbitrarily what my number truly is. But that's good news. I'm not over, I haven't overshot it. I've definitely gotten some numbers in the tank that I are closer to where they should be. And uh, tomorrow's another day. Thank you for watching. Please click like, please subscribe if you haven't become a subscriber yet. Tell your friends about this diary. I'm doing it for all of you. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and maybe I'll see you at Magna.